Good afternoon and happy International Women's Month. Thank you so much for investing your time with us this afternoon. My name is Sylvie and I manage our university relations programs and have been with the company for seven years now. On behalf of the team, Trish, Carmen, Constance, Rose, and myself, we welcome you to this year's first Way Up Info session. We are very excited to be together and what we hope will be a great experience for everyone. We will share information about who we are and what we do here at Chamberlain Group and what you can look forward to as an intern. You'll hear from a few former interns and our head of talent and inclusion, all of whom will share information and personal experiences that I believe will inspire you to join our one team. So who are we? Chamberlain Group is a global leader in smart access solutions across residential and commercial properties. What we do is design, and engineer residential garage door openers, commercial door operators, and gate entry systems. Our innovative products powered by the MyQ digital ecosystem provides customers with smart access solutions to move safely through their garage, homes, communities, businesses, and storage facilities, just to name a few. So if you see the slide, that Chamberlain, beautiful Chamberlain product with our LED lights, that's one of our products. We have been recently acquired by Blackstone. This investment from Blackstone positions Chamberlain Group with a greater resources to um, greater resources and expertise, excuse me, to scale its software based and connected services into new markets. Chamberlain Group expects to reach a broader base of global customers as a company accesses Blackstone's extensive network and expands its software technology into deeper commercial, industrial, and automotive markets. With Blackstone's long-term partnership, Chamberlain Group is poised to capitalize on connectivity mega trends and build on its leading position, providing high quality access hardware and cloud-driven access control solutions. Some fun facts. Did you know the average garage door opens and closes around 15,000 times a year? That's an average between three to five times a day. Over 4 million people have upgraded their garage into a smart garage by connecting it to MyQ. Last year, over 3 million in-garage deliveries were facilitated by, you guessed it, our MyQ technology. And finally, our one team is made of roughly 6,000 people from around the world who, as the name suggests, truly operate together as one unit. We are a diverse team spread across six continents, multiple countries, and at least 12 time zones through online, big box retail, distribution and dealers. Our products are available through a vast network of more than 20,000 distribution outlets. We speak many languages and come from a variety of cultures, but work as one team with a shared mission. So as we move towards connected homes and communities with a huge increase in smart home solutions, as well as the rise of urbanization, gated communities, multifamily communities and remote work, there is no surprise our MyQ app has been rapidly growing and expanding its impact in smart home technology. Some highlights. The MyQ pet portal is an automatic pet door that allows people to remotely let their dog out with just their using their smartphone. Our MyQ partnership with Mr. Bushi has offered in-dash garage door control. 45% of our connectable garage door openers have been connected to MyQ by our own customers. And in 2021, over 350,000 MyQ users had access to video. Let's dive into our summer program. I know you're excited to learn more about that. Our intern and co-op opportunities are designed to challenge and provide students with a necessary experience for a long, successful career. Our programs are designed to attract great talent for future roles, accomplish meaningful work that will benefit both you and our company, challenge you with some hands-on work experience, and of course, we want to make sure we foster some positive relationships with you and, our, and your schools. As you can see from the slide, we have three main disciplines that we look for, engineering, data, and business. For more details on each, please visit us at WayUp and at chamberlaingroup.com slash careers to learn more about each job. There are several different job descriptions, so I encourage you to take a look. And yes, you can apply to more than one opportunity. And of course, another popular question that we uh, are getting is, is this internship gonna be remote or hybrid? 
The answer, it all depends. Um, depending on what jo uh, job you're applying for, some will be able to be held remotely and others we will need you to come into the office. Um, and that will be week by week basis, um, depending on the projects, depending when you need to be in the office, we would ask you to come in. So what can you look forward to as an intern? I talked a lot about technology. So of course, innovation, giving opportunities to work on challenging projects to help grow our business and your skills. Our internship is project-based. You will receive a real project on real time and will be making a true contribution during your summer opportunity here at uh, Chamberlain Group. Development. Our exceptional training programs will enable you to gain valuable insights into your future aspirations. We wanna make sure you're a well-rounded professional. So we wanna make sure you have technical and soft skills under your belt. Engagement. Coffee chats with our leaders, wellness, workshops, and more utilizing Microsoft Teams or at, at our headquarters. A fan favorite is those coffee chats. You'll be talking to our CEO, our CTO, and other leaders. And really it's an hour to talk and ask them anything. And they are an open book. Networking, building those relationships with our leaders in addition to other interns with varying skills and backgrounds. As you saw on the previous slide, we have many dis um, disciplines that we look into. So of course we recruit from you know, many universities looking for that top talent. So we wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to network with your intern colleagues. Community. Giving back to our community is not only a corporate responsibility, it's important to us. Another fan favorite is an intern volunteer day. We all get together and we give back to the community. Another, another fan favorite. I can't express that one enough. Culture, we believe in being effective, passionate and accountable. That's why we're one team. So what we do in 12, mo 12 months, excuse me, we showcase in 12 to 14 weeks because we want you to experience what it is to be a Chamberlain employee because we don't see you as just temporary workers coming in during the summer. We are, you know, we look into our program to create that pipeline of you becoming a full-time employee once you graduate from school. Okay, so now, I'm going to hand it over to Trish. Enough about my enough of my voice. Let's, let's hand it over to Trish, our head of talent inclusion. Trish, over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm really happy to, to be here today. Kind of joined in this discussion as I believe it's an exciting time to be at Chamberlain Group. You know, I think as Sylvie mentioned, Chamberlain has a long history of de uh, delivering innovative products to meet customer needs. And we truly believe the diversity of our team makes our organization strong and contributes to our ability to innovate and remain a global leader in the smart access solutions across residential and commercial properties across the world. And I'm really fortunate to lead our talent and inclusion team where we implement solutions to help us build a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive culture, really driving that, that the culture that, um, that Sylvie mentioned. Um, and examples of what we do is we create great onboarding experiences. We bring in new early careers talent. Uh, we collect feedback from employees throughout the year in different ways. And we provide education uh, throughout at all levels on how we can work together and help each employee feel that they belong and that they can thrive and have wonderful careers at Chamberlain Group. And one of the ways we do this is through our early careers program which is a very a key uh, you know, strategic initiative we have in place that helps us build our diverse leadership pipeline by providing internships uh, and co-ops uh, opportunities throughout the year. And as Sylvie mentioned, it really is about providing meaningful work, which we hope will lead to working with us after graduation. I also wanted to call out that we have two business resource groups called BRGs our Women's Network and our People of Colors and Allies, POCA, as we refer to them. Uh, they run a lot of great programs throughout the year to help engage, develop, and retain employees. Um, I can't emphasize enough like the positive impact these internal networks have on our employees and communities and our interns and co-ops you know, really take advantage of learning from them. And as soon as they join the organization, they're able to join in and connect and, and have that network to help advance their careers. You might um, have seen some of the recent conversations that our POCA team managed as part of Black History Month. Um, and if you haven't, you can see highlights from the employees directly uh, on our videos that are available on YouTube. Um, and they, they'll give you a really good feeling for our culture and I think in what it's like to work here. And then our Women's uh, Network has organized several events for International Women's Day and Month, including a book club event with our CEO and two other senior leaders. 
And I, I again, I highlight this because it's a great example of how they connect our employees in fun ways and provide access to our senior leaders. So speaking of International Women's Day, we are very fortunate today to have three of our amazing female leaders and former interns to share more about their experiences and provide us with some tips on being an intern here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we've, we've put together some questions we think will really help uh, provide everyone with some helpful insight on our opportunities. And we'll make sure we leave room at the end for your particular questions that we haven't answered. So we're going to, I welcome Constance, Rose, and Carmen uh, to this conversation. Um, to start us off, I'm going to ask each one of you to introduce yourselves, and then we'll get into the questions here. So Constance, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so hi, I'm Constance. Um, so I was an intern at Chamberlain of the summer of 2017, and then I joined, I joined full-time um, January 2018. Um, I'm currently a former engineer three, and my background is I have a bachelor's in computer engineering from um, Georgia Tech. Rose, off to you. Yeah, hi everybody. So I'm Rose Ford, and uh, I'm an industrial designer. Uh, I originally was at the University of Cincinnati, uh, and I co-opted at the Chamberlain Group in spring of 2016, and then again in the summer of 2017. Uh, before starting full-time at Chamberlain in May of 2019. Um, and with that, I will pass it on to Carmen. Hello, everyone. My name is Carmen, and I was an intern during the summer of 2019. And after I finished the internship, I got hired as full-time. Um, I'm a software engineer, and I work as an Android developer on the MyQ app, which is really fun. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to start off with the, an initial question uh, for everyone, and, and it's to help everyone learn, like, what brought you to Chamberlain Group? Like, how did you learn about the opportunity, and what made you apply here versus somewhere else? So, Constance, can we start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm probably a little bit different in that this internship was actually recommended to me by um, one of my classmates because she had done... Um, the internship and she knew specifically I was looking for like former and embedded work to do so she recommended and then that's how I kind of figured out about it so an important note is that networking is very important um, because that's how I found out about this opportunity. Fantastic thank you thank you. Rose what would you add to that how, how was your experience the same or different? So so mine was very different from Constance actually in that I I kind of went into it I guess kind of blind Mm -hmm. um, at University of Cincinnati, they have this really robust co-op program. And so Chamberlain was just one of the companies on the list. And I, when I was interning here, it was kind of my first internship I was very new to industrial design and didn't really know like what direction I wanted to take with my career. And so I just, I took a shot at, uh, at CGI and it, it ended up being a really great decision. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's great. Wonderful. You know, let, staying with you, because in your intro, you talked about the fact that you had two internships. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide to come back after your first experience? I mean, there was just so much of it, I think, was the, the work environment um, and the team that I was working with. There was this really strong rapport within the team. Um, I felt like I was getting some really strong like mentorship from the, the people that I was working with. One of the things that uh, Chamberlain does is they kind of assign um, buddies. Like you have your, your manager, but then you also have a buddy who is, is able to be kind of that unofficial mentor, or I guess sort of official mentor to you during your mm -hmm. time, um, mm -hmm. where if you have literally any questions, uh, you can just turn to them and ask. And mm -hmm. so like having that rapport um, with one of my coworkers just was well, part of the draw to okay. uh, come back. Great, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Carmen, what was your experience like? What brought you here? So for me, uh, I found about Chamberlain in the career fair that my university organized. It was one of the companies there. Mm -hmm. And I remember I talked to one of the girls that is right now in my team and I found it like very interesting. So that's why I applied and finally I got the internship. That's great, that's great. Well, for the audience, we did not plan this, but you each have such unique different, <laughs> different paths that brought you here. There's obviously not one silver bullet to, to get the word out, but you know, networking, school relationships, these career fairs, 
obviously are, are key ways to get the word out. But uh, we're glad it, it all worked out for us that you you came and and, and joined us maybe once or twice. So thank you. Um, my next question is to really understand what was important uh, or what was the most important because there's a lot of things that are important in your experiences, but what would you say really stands out for you uh, with your experience as an intern here? So Carmen, we'll, we'll stay with you on this. What, what would you say to that? So for me, I remember that my team helped me uh, grow to the point that I felt like I was really participating and contributing in the app. I could see that what I was coding was actually being used by uh, real users. And that was like very motivating for me. Mm -hmm. And also uh, during the internship, I could see I, uh, how I was growing. In the end, I didn't really feel like an intern. Uh, they didn't treat me like the intern. They treated me like uh, another one of the team members. That was really good for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's great to be kind of feel like you belong as part of the team. And, uh, you know, I, I love, I'm, I'm glad to hear, you know, our our, uh, our value proposition is that you are going to do meaningful work. You are going to deliver innovative solutions. And I know in some cases, interns are creating, you know, they're creating the design, they're creating patents, if you will. Like, so they're really doing some exciting work here. So thank you. Rose, what would you say, um, what would you add on to that? And from your experience? Um, I mean, I think a lot of that, like Carmen really summed it up, but a lot of um, one of the things that was really important to me is that the, the projects that we were given were, you know, projects that the company actually wanted to move forward with. And it was it, it just it added a weight and an importance to the work that we were doing um, during my time here. And uh, yeah, it, I felt like it, it gave me a further appreciation for the the work that the company does and really helped me to grow uh, in my skills. Great, good. And Constance, I wanna vary the question a little bit for you. And um, it's, it's instead of the most important, but kind of get a little more granular. It's like, what was your favorite aspect of our culture or environment? Cause we talked a little bit about what we're doing to build you know, great culture of belonging and for everyone and, and having uh, growth opportunities for everyone. Um, what would you say was kind of your favorite part of our culture or environment? Um, so I would say it's just kind of like how welcoming um, mm -hmm. everyone was. And yes, you're assigned a buddy um, to kind of be your official mentor, but you can just like, um, if you're in the office, it's like kind of an open office plan. And like, you can just kind of go up to like anyone and ask them to like, you know, help you. And they're more than willing to help you and guide you um, with whatever um, current problem you're working through. I mean, that's why. Like, you know, um, teamwork is very, very mm -hmm. important at Chamberlain. So just kind of, um, yeah, just how like open and like willing, like everyone was just to help you, even though you are like, so to speak, an intern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. Well, before I go on to the next question, Carmen, Rose, would you want to add anything else with the kind of speaking particularly about the culture environment? I think I would just want to, you know, reiterate what Constance was saying about like how, how much collaboration is really uh, kind of emphasized mm -hmm. at Chamberlain. Great. Yeah, same for me. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Before we go on talking about your day jobs, you know, and uh, after post-internship opportunities, um, I'm curious to learn more about like, how did our intern program prepare you for success in your careers? Carmen, we'll, we'll start with you with that answer. With that question? So in my case, it was my first internship and it mm -hmm. really gave me the insight to see how a real company works with so many employees and how uh, an, an, an app like MyQ mm -hmm. is, is worked on, you know, like uh, all the teams that there are, the front end, the back end and everything. Um, yeah, it, it taught me a lot about like the working world. I had no idea about it before. Rose, how about you? Um, I think for me, it the project that I was on had me in a, a multidisciplinary team. And so it was able to give me kind of practice of like working closely within a team, uh, working closely with um, people outside of like my area of expertise, which just really added to like the the overall strength of the final project and like the breadth of knowledge that I was able to to learn while I was here. Mm -hmm. Good. And Constance, anything else to add to that? 
Um, I'll say that like part of the internship program is that, you know, we're, we're offer classes on like um, presentations and LinkedIn and networking. And like part of the internship is that at the end, you do have to kind of give a presentation on what you did over the summer. So it's just kind of getting into that like professional business mindset. And then, and then like part of it is just like, you know, you're, you're going to be, to be presenting your work pretty much for, for your career. Mm -hmm. um, so that was... <laughs> Um, so those classes were pretty nice. Great. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I know, um, you know, that the, the early careers conference is just one of those uh, key aspects of the program that we get lots of great feedback on and lots of, you know, wonderful input that continues to help us, you know, make sure the program content is relevant, you know, it's aligned to what the participants need in terms, i.e. interns and what the business needs as well. So that's, that's good to hear. Thank you. All right. Well, then, you know, you have these wonderful experiences, it sounds like, that really help prepare you for the real world, that full-time job in corporate America after, after the internship. Let's talk about that transition and what made you, you know, decide to work here um, and make Chamberlain your future employer after graduation. So, uh, Carmen, you want to start? Sure, yeah. So, during the internship, as I was saying, I felt like I was growing a lot and I wanted to come back and see where it could take me. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I feel like I have learned a lot from so many people in the company. And that's, I, I really feel like I'm growing every day. So that's really good for me. That's, I would say that's the part that made me want to come back. Oh, that's great. And Rose, how about you? Um, I think for me, so part of it is definitely the, the team dynamic. As I mentioned, like just having that really strong rapport with my team it was it was nice to know that it, like I was I was coming back to that um but you know the work that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis is just like really there's a lot of innovation in there which just is exciting um and really fulfilling so it was I was excited to be able to return that's great good and Constance what made you choose Chamberlain over potential other opportunities that I'm sure you had um so a, a lot of it, I think like a Rose and Carmen or his, just like, you know, I kind of knew the people who would I be working with and since I got along with them so well, so well it, it's, uh, it'd be like, you know, fun opportunity to come back. And since um, what I liked um, working on when I was an intern, like, um, you know, it's, it's when I came back full time, it's just like, I kind of continue to do the same type of work. And since that's just what I enjoyed, I just like, you know, it was, it was almost like a perfect match, I would say. <laughs> so your transition from your internship to full-time, it seems like it went really smooth. It was a nice transition, but were, were there any surprises, any, any challenges or, or things that you had to overcome along the way? I would say part of it is, um, so, you know, at the beginning, you almost feel very green, but I, the longer you work, the more people start coming to you. Um, as in your like you know all of a sudden like a subject matter expert and like you know you, you would like the more you work the more you become the go-to person and mm -hmm. it's just it's like weird seeing that trend like it's almost being flipped that now you're right. mentoring other people and you're like you're you may be even mentoring like people who are, who are older than you but they just don't have the knowledge that um you have in newer technology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh that's fantastic great Carmen well up to you any any surprises how was that transition for you when you were making it i would say the same as constance uh it was it was good to see that mm -hmm. i was the one going to everyone with questions and then uh i was able little by little to to help uh other people to mentor uh, mm -hmm. new interns and even i i felt like i had to participate more and give my point of view in the meetings and everything and mm -hmm. Uh, it was challenging, but it was like really, really good for me, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Rose, anything else to add? Was there anything different for you? Um, I think that for the most part, things were a, a pretty easy transition, but I think one of the things that um, Carmen and Constance have sort of touched on here that had stood out for me is it, it took me a second to like, find my voice again in meetings because mm -hmm. as a co-op most of my meetings it was very much or very clear cut that like peer-to-peer -peer, um communication um and then going into meetings with subject matter experts um very much feeling like I was I was back learning 
Um, so it took a little bit to like find my groove again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I wonder if that's a, a nice lead into the next question I have and kind of bringing it back to International Women's Day is just being a woman in this industry, you know, it's very male dominated, you know, were there any barriers for you, any challenges that you felt you had to overcome in your career so far? I'll, I'll let anyone take that question, whoever wants to start. This is a very good question. I think it's one of those things that's challenging because it's hard to gauge if like, if it's imposter syndrome mm -hmm. or if it's, if it's based on age or gender, or, you know, there are mm -hmm. so many different like facets that can kind of lead to it, do a potential challenge or obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, but so I think one of the things that I've kind of needed to recognize is like, if I'm having an interaction with somebody where it, it feels like there's maybe a bias there that it could just be my personal lens on it um, and needing to kind of give the benefit of the doubt and just kind of work on recognizing you know that that I am the subject matter expert um, you know in my in my role no that's great um, I think I double click on one of your responses about you know it took you a while to find your voice but you did so do you, can you think of it, what, what was contributing to that? Like what helped you find your voice here and kind of try to put all those insecurities, all those, you know, the imposter syndrome aside to say, you know, I know this, I got this, <laughs> you know? Honestly, I'm going back to my team again. It was a lot of encouragement from them and just kind of that, um, them reminding me that like, mm -hmm. I, I do know what I am talking about and that like, these are things that I have been working on and have the knowledge around. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's just been a, some, having some good mentorship. That's great. Yeah. And that encouragement and someone's mm -hmm. there to, yeah, I got your back. Good, good. And you mentioned the mentorship before as well. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Constance, Carmen, any, anything else you would add from your experiences so far that you've had to deal with? Um, I guess my experience was like, you know, in like, you know, I already had this strong camaraderie with the team that I worked with when I was an intern, mm -hmm. but then when you start working multidisciplinary with other people who weren't there when you're an intern at first, um, and also kind of in fields that are tangentially related, but you're not necessarily a subject matter expert in, um, at first it was just kind of like my proposals or I feel like my ideas weren't taken seriously. Part of that Rose touched on, it, kind of, it was kind of hard to tell, it's like, was it due to my gender or what was it like due to my age? Mm -hmm. um, but then as also Rose touched on, I think a huge part in boosting my confidence is I had the backing of my team. Um, like, you know, the engine, like, you know, the other former engineer that I was working with, who was a lead, like, you know, he supported me, in my decisions 100%. And like, you know, once the other team members like saw that my work was solid and my work was good, you know, I started building rapport with them. And now um, I would say like, you know, if I were to work with those coworkers ever again, they would like no questions asked, they would, mm -hmm. you know, know and have confidence in my decisions and what I'm doing. That's great. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I would say something similar for me. I was really lucky with my team. They always encouraged me and they would ask uh, what my opinion was and they would take it into account. Uh, so that really helped me uh, to have a voice and to say what I would think and, and, and see that people really valued it and mm -hmm. took it into account. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your candid responses there because uh, we know there's challenges. We know there's some barriers that you have to kind of work through. And it sounds like you have all have had such great um, support, you know, from your team, from your managers to help you get past those and become more confident and greater contributor to, I'm sure, the work that you're doing as well. Um, let's talk about the work itself or the the environment that you've been working because you all joined, you know, during this transition to remote work, hybrid working uh, environments. Let's 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 share a little bit of it, you know, advice uh, on, on how that's going, and um, you know, especially for folks that are students that maybe haven't had that experience so far. Um, what advice would you give to them to think about uh, as they take on internships in in a situation like ours that it's going to be hybrid or remote, one hundred percent? What what advice would you give? Uh, Rose, can we start with you? Oh, uh, sure. I guess I would say that um, I have found a lot of value in the uh, in in-person collaboration. 
um, it was one of those things where like as soon as hybrid or like the office started opening up again, it was one of those things that I recognized um, was making my days more productive to, mm. to be in the office and having that collaboration with people. Like not every single day, but on the days where I was needing that collaboration, um, it, it just really, it, it was more than a team's call could, could handle. Um, and so if you, if you are in a position where you are planning on having a hybrid environment, um, really figuring out um, how to make that hybrid uh, situation benefit you, making sure that like the days that you are going in are, are days that will make for a more productive and collaborative day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really plan for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Good. Constance, what would you add? Um, I would say if you are in a situation where you're not in person or face to face with your peers, um, learning how to communicate um, effectively because at home everyone tends to seem to have like their favorite way of like how to communicate with their coworkers. So just um, learning how to communicate with um, your coworkers and over communicating. I would say would probably be the most important things. And yes, like while we can like chat with each other really easy, sometimes it's just better just to hop on a phone call and like, you know, you can you can get it solved in five minutes as opposed to like scheduling a meeting for tomorrow for 30 minutes or trying to figure it out through like a chain of emails. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, great. Great. Totally relate to that. Yeah. And Carmen, any anything else you'd add from your experience? I would say uh, something similar for me, but it's uh, not only work related, but try to talk to the people in your team and have, for example, uh, we used to have some happy hours on Thursdays and we would just talk to everyone and see how everyone's doing because that's something that you don't get when you work from home. For mm -hmm. example, when you go to lunch with your teammates and you talk to them, you don't get that part. So for me, uh, it was very important to try to maintain that type of communication with my coworkers and see uh, not only work related, but also how they were doing in general. Great, good. I'm just gonna pause here for a second because I was writing down a few things that seem to be reoccurring themes from, from all of your responses. And um, you know, just the importance of mentorship, right? And having you know managers and teams um, to support you and help you grow in the organization. Um, all of you mentioned um, an aspect of meaningful work and being able to be very innovative and drive products and drive uh, solutions uh, in, in a very challenging way, a meaningful way. Um, I heard a lot about collaboration and teamwork, which is fantastic because, you know, I, you know, we are one team and, and we try to really uh, infuse that into everything we do because we're only going to be successful working together as one team. So I, I love hearing that come out. Um, and, uh, you know, again, just being able to have, uh, be yourself and have those growth opportunities as you, you know, as you can in the organization and, and being able to go to anyone, uh, no matter what level to help, uh, help get it done, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna, I think, turn it over to you, Sylvie, uh, to see if there's any questions now that we've got a little bit of time here. Yes, there's a few. Okay. Um, so, what qualities do we look for when it comes to interns? So I know some of you now have become mentors and, and have been par participating in some interviews. So let us know. And then I'll, of course, I'll chime in at the end, but I want to make sure our panel goes first and, and answers that. I think one of the, one of the main qualities that I look for, or a couple of qualities that I look for in interns is, um, uh, just innovative thinking and the uh, like the desire to learn, like the the openness and excitement to learn. Yeah, for me, it makes a difference too when somebody is very motivated to learn uh, because uh, I have seen people that they knew a lot uh, about Android, for example, but they weren't that motivating motivated. So, uh, I think it's it's really important to like what you're doing because if not, uh, it doesn't make much sense. Right, positive attitude, right? That's what we're hearing. So having a positive attitude goes a long way. Of course, you're going to great universities, you're learning some technical information. So yes, that is important. When we are interviewing you, um, especially our hiring managers, they are gonna be asking technical questions. While you're not a subject matter expert just yet, we do hope that you know at least the fundamentals, right? The goal is what you're learning in school, 
applying it to a real project. So again, going to great schools, let's apply that knowledge to our internship. But that's the technical, but again, that attitude will go a long way. Also making sure if you don't have an internship just yet, think about your school projects. Those you can add onto your resume and it will showcase the work that you're, you're doing, especially if there's technical components. And the other thing I would say, if you have, you know, part of any organizations, if you're part of the robotics team, if, you know, what, whatever, add that. Volunteering, right? If they do some volunteering, add that. As you notice from our, you know, previous slides and listening to our panel, um, they're busy. We're doing a lot of things. So if you showcase that as well, that, you know, you can, you have good time management skills by going to school, being part of a club, doing some volunteer, that's going to tell us, you know, this culture is right for you, right? It's finding the right culture where, you know, you're going to be challenged, you're going to have fun, and you're going to give back to the community. So those are some of the um, core values that you, you know, are, um, are close to your heart, you know, Chamberlain Group is an, a great place for you to, to have that and more. And I know we, we said we, um, if there's any extroverts and want to ask their question live, um, we can do that. And in the meantime, I know there has been a question about um, F1 visas. And at the time, unfortunately, we are unable to hire students that, that are on F1 visas. Um, so we do, um, unfortunately, that's our answer currently for our intern and co-op opportunities. Let me look here, let's see. Uh, so one of the questions here is if our opportunities are in Illinois, yes. Are there any remote possibilities? Um, yes, so our headquarters is located in Oak Brook, Illinois, which is about 20 miles west of the city of Chicago. Some of our interns like to stay in the city and some like to uh, be close to the to our headquarters. We do have a Chicago um, office as well, and that's um, more focused on our developers. So if you're a developer and you want to work in the city, absolutely, you have that opportunity. And even if you're, you know, your home office is headquarters, you are welcome to visit the Chicago office um, should you choose to. And remote. There are some opportunities that we have that possibility. So it's case by case. Um, once you apply, we're having conversations. I will definitely be asking, you know, what is your preference? And if the job does allow remote, we'll have that, we'll continue to have that conversation and, and make sure that you, you know, interview with the hiring team. Okay, this is gonna be for the panel. Can you share some tips on how to break the ice? Be comfortable asking for help when joining an internship in a remote setting? So this is a great question because think about it, you're in your, you know, you're at home and you're four walls and you're, you need help. What's the best way to approach that? Well, so I would say part, part of it is um, when, I mean, this even happens like today when it's just, I need to ask someone who I don't know for help or I was referred to someone. Um, one thing you can do is that you can get the person who you do know who referred you to, um, this person that you need to ask to like introduce you to. So usually that's just like a quick email saying, it's just like, hi, Bob, this is Adam. Um, Const like Constance works under me. Uh, she needs to ask you a question. So that could be like, you know, so that's if you want to get your mentor to help you break the ice or sometimes when, if you just want to send a message directly to them, what I'll do, I'll just be like, hi, Bob, um, I'm Constance. I work with Adam. And he said that you can help me with X, Y, Z problems. So. And like no one's here is scary. Like the worst that they can do is say no. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty much just kind of like intro, like say, hey, like this is like you know my relationship to you or who like you know said to ask you, and then just kind of like ask your question. Great tips. Anything? Anything to add, Carmen or Rose? I would do basically the same uh, that she does. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just one of those instances where like it's going to feel awkward until it stops feeling awkward. Like you, you just kind of have to do it until it becomes, uh, you know, an everyday or like same old thing. Yeah, and you know we're it we're constantly you know growing, so you know there's always new employees um, joining, and you introduce yourself, right? So introducing yourself. And say, you know, just saying, stating who you are, what department, 
um, or as Constance mentioned, having someone, you know, um, send an email always helps. If you're on site, even better, get up if they're there, knock on that door or a workstation and introduce yourself, right? That's a great way to do that. Another opportunity to get comfortable is during, you know, your lunch time, you know, go downstairs. We have an amazing cafeteria and go downstairs and have lunch with other folks. We also have a walking path. Um, so maybe you want to, you know, um, say, Hey, I'm in the office. Do you want to go for a walk around, you know, the, our walking path? Go, do that. We also have a coffee shop downstairs. Another opportunity. If you want to, you know, like, Hey, let's grab some coffee or tea, whatever, and have a 15, you know, introduction meeting, just that, right. Putting on the, on the calendar so you can meet other individuals. And the more you do it, the more comfortable it gets. So it's, um, you know, um, have that elevator speech. That's always important. So I know many times our CEO is in the elevator and say, and they'll, they'll, she'll, he'll say hi. And, um, you're going to introduce yourself. And one thing I always joke around when I say, if you see our executives run and I'm like, just kidding, they actually want to meet you. So we definitely encourage you to, you know, walk to one of our executives or they're around, introduce yourself, let them know who you are, what department you're working for, what projects you're on. And they love hearing from you. So the more, the more you do it, the better it gets. So practice. Okay, let's see what else. What other great questions we have here? Da, da, da. Okay, um, another great question. So um, some of you um, are looking for full-time opportunities. Great, you know, you're graduating or you already graduated. Please look at um, our website, chamberlaingroup.com slash careers. All our jobs are posted, full-time and internship opportunities. Please go ahead and create a profile and maybe you don't see a job right now um, that you're of, of interest, please don't be discouraged. We do post on real time, but the best thing is to create a, a profile in our applicant tracking system. And that way you can click on what types of work you're interested in. So when we do post a job, you'll get notified saying, hey, this you know, position has been, um, is new, feel free to apply. Um, so I really encourage you to do that today, if possible, or this sometime this week. So I, mean, I saw a couple about the interview process and kind of just if uh, you could give like an overview of the interview process and if there was any tips from the panelists on how to prepare for those interviews. Thank you, Trish. That's mm -hmm. a great question. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to um, what our timeline, so that, that's, that brings me to our next slide, um, the timeline. So right now, uh, we are still currently looking for summer um, interns and co-ops for this summer 2022. Uh, Right now, I'll apply online, right? We are going to some campuses and uh, on-site and virtual, but regardless, apply online so we can so you can go ahead and create your profile. And we are looking, we're looking at, at the applications, at the resumes. We then send those to our managers. If our managers find your application of interest, we will notify you and schedule a virtual interview. Um, typically first it's with me, with someone from my team in HR. And then um, the next step would be to interview with the hiring manager. And sometimes it could be a panel interview and, or it could be a couple of different interviews. Um, the best thing to, to let the best advice I can give you when you do talk to, and, I'm, and then I'll, add, I'll have um, our panelists um, add to it. When it comes to the technical, as I mentioned, making sure you can talk about the skills that you have, the, the knowledge of those of technical um, skills, what projects you've worked on, um, and then once, let's say, the manager says, great, like Constance, I like Constance, I want her to join the team, um, you'll be working with me, we'll have those conversations, we'll make those um, offers, and all of that will happen virtually, we do use Microsoft Teams um, for our virtual interviews, and, and offers, or I'll, I'll just pick up the phone, like as Constance says, I'll just pick up the phone and, and give you a call um, to have those conversations. Um, finally, you accept, you know, we got to fill out some paperwork, make sure you sign your offer letter, and we'll start the process of, you know, background, drug screens, all that will happen um, in your hometown. So for example, if you are at on campus, of course, we can schedule your drug screen to be near campus or wherever you are during the time. Um, and then we do offer three start dates right now because 
as mentioned, we do recruit from many universities and we understand, you know, there's different schedules. So we want to make sure we can accommodate as best as possible your start date. Um, but I want to go back to um, um, is there anything that our panel would like to add when it comes to um, any tips on the interview process? I would say just uh, be able to talk about the projects you have worked on and describe your experience and uh, all the challenges that you have you have had to overcome during those projects. That's really important for me. I think kind of uh, bouncing off of that, um, just being able to be excited or proud of the work that you are showing off. Um, because if you aren't excited about it, we won't be excited about it. Like we're, we'll feed off of your energy in the interview. That's a big one. One thing I've noticed sometimes that we don't, we don't sell ourselves, right? We're, we're, we're timid. Um, and when I'm talking to, you know, candidates and they're telling me all this stuff, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, that's great. Like, tell me more, you know? So be proud. You're, you're doing some amazing stuff and I, school's hard, right? School's hard, especially in this environment. And, and you're doing some amazing work and I applaud you for being so flexible and, and pivoting with this, you know, environment. We're doing the same thing here, right? So talking about how you've been able to be flexible, how you're able to, you know, solve um, whatever problems they may be regarding, you know, your school projects. Um, but I think that's, you know, having that attitude goes a long way. Um, and in and don't be humble, be proud, be proud of the work that you're doing. That also goes goes a long way. So uh, we actually have a volunteer for a live oh, question if you're ready. Yes, let's ready. do it. Thank Fair you. Enough, if you wanna Pop on, I'll turn on your video now. Uh, okay, perfect. Also about interview, what you, you're looking for the candidate, like the attitudes, the strong work in the importance of the LinkedIn, how important is LinkedIn, how important is send a message, be different. So my two questions is uh, about the interview, what to expect, we answer what to expect, uh, like what you're looking more is the attitudes or is the the what we have or in linkage was the is very important send a message every time we apply that's that's important so uh it's a two-part question so linkedin is very important and we definitely use that um in our company and it's um just to 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 give you an example Today, our CTO emailed me because we were, are, have been promoting our internships on LinkedIn, and someone reached out to our CTO saying, "Hey, I have, you know, I have applied to this opportunity. I'm very excited." So guess what? Our CTO emailed me saying, hey, Sylvie, this person is interested. Please follow up. So LinkedIn does go a long way. Uh, with that being said, make sure you have a, a, your LinkedIn is up to date as best as possible uh, because we do um, you know, review your, your, your LinkedIn profile. Um, and then your second question is uh, more of the interview, correct? Like, what are we like looking for? Um, it's again talking about your project or your internship. What what has been your responsibility? Like, what role did you take during a project? Right? What was your role, um, and what did you accomplish? So, if you can articulate, right? If you can articulate what you did, what your contribution was, and what were the results, that will help us. You know, that will help you right to 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 be a top um, candidate when it comes to interviewing um we know er, you know early career it, it's a, it's hard because there's you know so many students but how can you you know um make sure that you are a top candidate and it's really being able to articulate you know your accomplishments and with that being said, it's showing having that you know positive attitude, being open to feedback. Um, we're looking for you know um, students that that want to learn, right? They want to learn, and they're open to that. So if you can articulate that as well during your conversation. So for example, if they say you know tell me a time where you know you there was a challenge, what did you do? Be able to 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 talk about that and have some tangible examples. That always helps um, you know our managers. Um, there is this other question. So 
if the internship um, isn't remote, does Chamberlain provide housing accommodations? The answer is no, um, but what we do offer, we do offer a bonus at the end of the program. So while we are unable to help you in the front end, as far as stipends go, we do help you in the back end and we wanna make sure you do have, you know, that extra bonus when you go back to school. Um, but what we do is all our interns, um, we uh, connect you. So even before you join on day one, you have the opportunity to connect with other Chamberlain interns. And of course we ask for permission to share your information and by your information it's email and um, your name and phone number and if you're looking for a roommate you know you you'll have those those other, those contacts that are also looking for roommates and I've seen that work really well other things is you know there's some different Facebook pages like the University of Cincinnati for example has a great page on Facebook that gives you tips of where to go um, for for um, to look for housing um, during your your co-op opportunities so that um, I hope that answers the question and I know we're we have a it's three, I can't believe this is going by so fast so we have three minutes so I'm gonna jump to the next slide because I want to make sure um, I want to make sure I thank all of you that participated. Um, thank you um, to our panelists, to Trish for sharing your insights and being your authentic, authentic selves, excuse me. Thank you for um, starting a, us on this right direction as we continue to celebrate International Women's Month. Um, please follow us on your favorite network um, and scan the code for our flyer with more FAQ. So maybe there's some questions that we weren't able to answer. Uh, the the answer might be on that flyer. But once again, we'll make sure we do our due diligence and answer any questions that we have not yet um, responded to. Um, thank you once again for all the great questions. Thank you for participating. We hope this really helped you as you navigate um, your search for an internship. We really hope you, know, you consider Chamberlain Group as that potential internship opportunity and full-time. Um, without further ado, I think we're good. Anything else? Bye, everyone. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Before thank you. <laughs>